Hello my lovely friends, my name is Ava and today I'm going to be giving you some historical romance series recommendations. I love reading historical romances. That might not be something a lot of people know because I feel like I don't make a lot of historical recommendations on here, but um, I do. I love reading historicals. I have a lot of historicals. I love showing them off. So um, I thought I'd give you 10 series that I just love. I read every single book in all of these series, um, except for one. <laughs> <laughs> That's all. Talk about why. Um, but I love all of these series and all these authors. We have some repeat authors. Um, like I'll talk about multiple series from one author. Um, so yeah, let's get started. So the first author that I want to mention is, of course, Lisa Kleypas. And I've only read three of her series. So I'm going to talk about that was the first series I want to mention. I own all of the books in the series. So I'm very happy about this. I think that's like the only series I own all of the books from on this entire list. We'll see. Um, but it's the Ravenels. <laughs> I love this series so much. So I'm just going to like go through the books in the series kind of quick. So I'll first mention all the books in this series are centered around this one family called the Ravenels and all of them getting married. So it's like a family romance series. First one is Cold Hearted Rake by Lisa Kleypas. This is definitely not my favorite in the series, but I feel like it's a great stepping stone to the other gems in the series. You know, the heroine has married one of the Ravenel brothers, but he's died and he was very abusive. And so the their cousin comes in to inherit the title and they end up falling in love, even though they're enemies at first. Marrying Winterborn is second and you first read about their love story in book one. So this is kind of like coming off of book one. That's why I say you should probably read this series in order specifically. Um, but this is a second chance wedding kind of situation um, with a self-made man. Book three, Devil in Spring is my personal favorite. This is about Pandora and Gabriel. Gabriel, yes. And this is a compromised position romance, marriage of convenience. I just, I love this one so much. Pandora is everything to me. And then book four, Hello Stranger is a doctor. Like she's a female doctor which is really cool to me. Next is Devil's Daughter. And here's a step back for that one. This is a single mom widow romance where she falls in love with her husband's like childhood bully, even though he's very sorry about it. I love this one. Book six is Chasing Cassandra. I love this one. Brooding hero, a woman that just wants to get married and start a family and have an epic love story. And he claims that he can never love. The hero claims he can't love but Cassandra might show him how, you know, love this one. Um, this is the step back. I don't think I showed it. And then this is the one I haven't read yet. Out of all the books in this, in this video, this is the one book that I haven't read yet. Um, this is A Devil in Disguise, technically book seven, but people have told me like, you can read this book on its own. Um, Cause I think, it, is it second generation? I'm not sure, but um, I've not read this one yet. So I don't really know what it's about, but I know that my friends Love this one. I absolutely adore this series. And some people recommend that you read the Wallflower series, which I'm about to get into before you get to this one. And you can, that'd probably be a better reading experience for you. But I read these first and I fell in love with them anyway. <laughs> so the Wallflower series is next. I only own two books in that series. Okay, so we have four main books in this series and there's two kind of like add-ons. So book number 0.5, kind of like the prequel to this series is Again the Magic. If you've not heard about this book yet, you're probably very new to historical romance and that's okay. But this one is very, very, very popular. Um, this is a second chance romance that is just so, so good. And so that's like the prequel. And then the next four books are kind of like the main books in the series. So you can read this book on its own. You can read the other books in the series before you get to this one, but I say read this one first because it's just so good. And so first book in the Wallflower series is Secrets of a Summer Night. So each book in this series is about a woman who is in this uh, four women like friend group and they're all wallflowers and it's about them falling in love and finding the love of their life. So this is, a like social class difference kind of. We have like a self-made man falling for the heroine, but they're enemies and all that jazz. Book two is It Happened One Autumn, which is enemies, enemies to lovers. One of the biggest enemies to lovers I've ever read in a historical, but it is so good. Then book three is Devil in Winter. This is a marriage of convenience with a heroine who has a stutter, who's trying to escape her very abusive family and her running away with to Gretna Green with one of the villains from the previous books in the series. Book four is Scandal in Spring, which is a childhood enemies, you know, to 
lover's romance um, kind of set up by her parents <laughs> and it's actually really sweet. I love this one. And then there's also book number 4.5 in the series, which is A Wallflower Christmas, which is just a really nice pick me up book um, all about the wallflower friends, like getting together for Christmas time. And then another little romance you read about, which is really, really fun. I really enjoyed this one. And then the last series I want to mention by Lisa Kleypas that I just love and I think everyone else adores too is The Hathaways. This one's kind of underrated. Not a lot of people have read this series compared to the other two I've mentioned, but I really recommend it because they're just so good. There are five main books in the series. I only own two currently. And yeah, this is just about the Hathaway family finding the love of their lives, you know? Um, first is Mind Till Midnight. This is a lot of people's favorites. This is about a woman who's kind of of taking care of the halfway family like she is the eldest sister I'm pretty sure and she's trying to rope in all of her siblings and then she falls in love with Cam who is of a different class than her but they cannot help but fall in love. Book number two is Seduce Me at Sunrise. This is a childhood crush to more romance. So good. Book three is Tempt Me at Twilight. This one has a step back. This one is the romance between one of the Hathaway sisters and um, her a uh, romance with a like hotel owner, which is really cool. Book number four is Married by Morning. This is about the governess to the Hathaway family falling in love with the eldest brother of the Hathaway family. Um, and it's really good. The heroine is actually also hiding her identity. So you're trying to figure out who she actually is. And then the last book in the series, Love in the Afternoon is so good. It's probably my favorite in the series. Um, this is actually like a pen pal romance where the heroine is hiding her identity from the hero. Um, and it is, fantastic. Those are three series I love from Lisa Claypas. Let's go on to another author that I just love, who is Tessa Dare. Um, I feel like these two authors are great gateways into historic romance if you've never read it before or you're new to the genre. So the first one I want to mention is the Girl Meets Duke series. Um, there are supposed to be four in here, but like it feels like book four is on hold for a very long time to be published. And so I'm, I'm just patiently waiting and waiting. It's been trying to come out for years and hasn't come out yet. So anyway, the first one is The Duchess Deal, um, which is a marriage romance. The heroine made this wedding dress and the people who ordered it never paid. And so she comes into the office of the Duke who ordered the wedding dress for his fiance. And it's like, hey, you never paid for this. I want you to pay for it now. And he's like, okay, my fiance left me. How about you marry me instead? So that's what happens. Book two is The Governess Game. This is a governess romance with amazing, hilarious children in here. <laughs> I love this one. And then the third book is probably my favorite, which is The Wallflower Wager. We have a heroine who owns like a billion kajillion pets and her falling in love with the guy who's trying to flip the house next door to hers and they're trying to find homes for all the pets that she has and it is so good. I keep saying that about all these books, but like I love all the books in all these series, honestly. I then have the Castles Ever After series by Tessa Dare. There are four books in this series. I thankfully own all four. And yeah, these are all about like um, heroines who end up inheriting castles from this long lost uncle or duke or whatever. Um, so they each inherit their own castle, which is really cool. This one is about our heroine falling in love with the recluse owner of this one castle who just so happens to have a vision impairment. And um, he is very, very, very grumpy. Book two, Say Yes to the Marquess, is kind of like a sports boxing romance. This heroine inherits this castle. This heroine has been engaged to this one guy for years and he's never tried to actually marry her. So she's sick of it. She goes to that guy's brother and it's like, hey, I'm calling off the engagement with your brother so long. Um, he has, he obviously doesn't want to marry me. And he's like, no, 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 I'm going to make sure this wedding happens. But instead of in, in, but instead of making sure the wedding happens, he accidentally falls in love with her instead. Book three is When a Scott Ties the Knot. This one, our heroine is very socially anxious. I feel you, girl. Um, and she doesn't want to marry and she doesn't want to be in society to find a husband because of her social anxiety. And so she makes up this elaborate lie that she has a man that she is in love with who is off at war. And she ends up writing these fake letters to said man. She makes up a whole name for him and everything and sends off the letters. Um, and there, and then there's actually a man with that name who exists in the military. And so the letters are being delivered to him and <laughs> he comes one day and is like, hey, I'm here to marry you. And she's like, I don't know who you are. Um, and so, yeah, it's really good. I love this one. Give me a second. I gotta go let this cat out of the room. He is screaming. Okay, I'm back. <laughs> anyway, uh, the last book that I want to mention is Do You Want to Start a Scandal? And this one is a romance where the two are in like a compromised position and they're trying to find out this secret or mystery or whatever and 
very, very, very enjoyable. And the last series I want to mention is the Spindle Cove series by Tessa Dare. I only own one main book in the series and then two novellas. So this series all takes place in this one town called Spindle Cove, which is a town created by Susanna and her father from book one for women to come seek refuge, to take a break from society. It's a quaint small town, mostly filled with women. Um, and so in this first book, there's a hero trying to form a militia in this town and he's finding it very difficult because there's only really women here. Um, and it's his romance with Susanna, the person who kind of like founded the town. There's a novella called Once Upon a Winter's Eve, which is another one where we have a heroine from Spindle Cove falling in love with this long lost love of hers. Um, it's a Christmas novella. I really enjoyed it. Uh, book two is A Week to be Wicked. This is a road trip romance with a heroine who loves fossils. This is a fan favorite for sure in the series. Book three is A Lady by Midnight. This one is about I think like a militia man falling in love with the heroine who is slowly realizing that she might be a titled lady and they're trying to like figure out what is going on there. And then book number 3.5 is this one, Beauty and the Blacksmith. I love this one. It's about a titled lady falling in love with the Spindle Cove town blacksmith. And it is just so adorable. Book four is Any Duchess Will Do. We have a duke whose mother is pressuring him to marry. She takes him to Spindle Cove, brings him into this shop and is like, hey, you need to pick out one woman here and I will train her to be your duchess and you will marry her. So he randomly picks one woman who just happens to be the barmaid. And he like pulls her aside and is like, hey, if you go through with this scheme and you pretend to be the worst duchess possible, I will pay you, okay? So I don't have to get married. And so she comes to London with them to learn how to be a duchess and they end up falling in love, obviously. Book number 4.5 in this series uh, is Lord Dashwood Missed Out, which is a writer romance. Our heroine is a writer and the hero and her used to have a thing and then it's kind of like rekindled in this one. There's actually book five, Love Letters from a Lord, hopefully coming out soon. It says it's supposed to be published in 2022. So I hope we get this one very soon. The cover is very cute, but I assume they're gonna change it with people to match all the other ones, but um, I can't wait for this one to be released. Okay, so now we're done with those two authors. We're gonna go to a different author that I've been loving, which is Donna Fletcher. I've only read one of her series in entirety, so I'm just gonna be talking about that series, but it is so good. It's a Highlander romance series that is fantastic. Okay, this is the Sinclair Brothers series. I only own two books. Book one is Return of the Rogue. This is a arranged marriage to align families romance and its age gap. She is very young compared to him, which is honestly a very common occurrence in historicals, but we're, we're not going to get into that today. So um, I really enjoyed this one, but it's not my favorite. And book two is Under the Highlander Spell. This one, our hero, by the way, I forgot to mention each book in the series is centered around one of these Sinclair brothers. There's four Sinclair brothers. At the beginning, you see three, and the fourth one is missing. He's trying to find their fourth brother. Okay, so he's trying to find the fourth brother, and he ends up getting injured, and this heroine heals him, and then he's trying to find her again because he's like, can't stop thinking about her, you know? Book three is the angel and the Highlander. Um, this heroine is pretending to be a nun in a nunnery to escape her family and the hero comes to find her. I love this one. It's probably my second favorite in the series. My favorite in the series is book four, which is about that missing brother and him falling in love with his enemy's daughter and he kidnapped her. And there's a one bed trope and they're stuck in a cabin together. But you gotta read the other books in the series to get to this one, okay? Cause it makes more sense because the brothers are trying to find him all in the other books in the series, you know? So. Like you get more background knowledge if you read the other books, but this series is very solid. I really love this one. I also love Maya Banks. If you have not read Maya Banks's Highlander books, you need to get on it, please. I've read her two Highlander series. So first one is the Montgomery and Armstrong series. I only own book one, which is Never Seduce a Scott. This is a romance series between two rivaling families, the Montgomerys and Armstrongs and them kind of like reconcile, reconciling after their, um, feud. They've had a feud for a while and this book kind of like breaks the feud. But this is a arranged marriage uh, between two rivaling families. Our heroine here is deaf um, and the two of them shouldn't love each other because they're from rivaling families. But once they get married, they do fall in love. It is beautiful. It's one of my favorite historicals of all time. Book two is Highlander Most Wanted. Um, this is about a heroine who is very damaged, has been abused for many years and her falling in love with one of the, um, I think, Armstrong brothers. I'm not sure. Um, but you met him in book one. But yeah, this one has a lot of trigger warnings dealing with domestic violence, um, sexual assault, all that stuff. So please go in with caution. Then book three is on pause indefinitely, apparently. This is Highland Ever After, which 
I want to read and many other people want to read so badly, but um, I think Maya Banks is going through some stuff either with her health and with the publisher. I don't think she's with this publisher anymore, so I don't think she can publish it. I think that's what happened. Um, so I'm really sad, but hopefully one day, one day this can be published, but I am not getting my hopes up. Then uh, Maya Banks' other Highlander series is the McCabe trilogy. I own two books. Um, this is about the McCabe brothers um, finding their love, their romances. There's three brothers and each book is just centered around one of them. First book is A Bed with a Highlander. Um, our heroine in here was kidnapped by this evil guy and um, she ends up escaping him and finding herself at this keep. That Laird kind of like takes her in and it forces her to marry him so he can inherit her fortune and everything in her estate. Um, but then they end up falling in love, actually. Then book two is Seduction of a Highland Lass. Our heroine here gets injured on the way to meet his betrothed for the first time, but he gets injured and he ends up on the doorstep of this cabin of this healer and she ends up healing him and he thinks she is an angel sent from above and he ends up falling in love with her. But there's complications because he's about to be betrothed to another woman he's never met before and doesn't know. And then the third book in the series is Never Love a Highlander, which is about a warrior woman falling in love with one of the McKay brothers. But there is a lot of trouble at first because he doesn't think that a woman should fight. And she shows him that a woman can do a lot of the same things a man can do, especially when it comes to fighting. And the last series that I want to mention is the Duchess Diaries series by Karen Hawkins. Karen Hawkins is becoming a new favorite author of mine as well. I love this series so much. So I own two books in this series. Each book in the series is about one of these sisters. There's three sisters, one of them finding their love, the love of their life. Um, and so the first one, how to Capture a Countess. It's about our heroine who met this lord at this party. And um, by some means, the end of their conversation ends up with him landing in the fountain and society laughing at him and him becoming kind of like a laughing stock. So he's made his life mission to find the woman who like tripped him into this fountain and to seek retribution. But it's been years, he's finally found her and he's realized the great solution to this is to force her to marry him. Book number two is How to Pursue a Princess. It's about our heroine who is trying to marry for money because her family is about to go under bankruptcy, you know? And so she's trying to find an advantageous match, but um, she's at this house party. All of them happen during house parties, by the way at um, this duchess's house. And she's kind of like become their godmother and has tried to scheme her way into making these matches. It is so, so funny. I love this duchess. She has tasked herself to help these women make matches. And so the heroine in this one goes to this house party to find a rich husband, um, but she ends up falling for actually the destitute prince that is going, I think is a Prussian prince. Um, and he claims that he has no money, even though he's a prince, um, when in actuality he is filthy rich, but he does not want a woman to want him simply because of money. He wants to fall in love. He wants a woman to fall in love with who he actually is. And so they're both falling for each other, but she thinks that she could never have him because he doesn't have money or claims that he doesn't, um, but he just wants the heroine to finally admit that she doesn't care about the money and she just wants him. Book three is How to Entice an Enchantress. Um, our heroine here is trying to find a husband also at a house party and the hero is actually her broody scarred next door neighbor who is a widower and he goes to this house party to try and woo her and make up for the wrongdoings that he did. He's very socially awkward and he says the wrong things all the time and he's accidentally insulted her many times and he's trying to make up for it and convince her that they should be married even though he does not believe in marrying for love. She is like, I wanna marry someone for love. And he's like, that's foolish. She's like, I don't care. You don't have to be with me then. But he wants her so badly and he doesn't realize that it's love. <laughs> so there you have it. Those are 10 historical romance series that I love. Let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to. Also leave down below any series recommendations you have for us that are historical romances. Um, and if you don't feel like commenting any of those things, you can leave me the book stack emoji in the comment section down below. But anyways, thank y'all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day.